Troop specialization used to be a major thing in Rise of Kingdoms, but is it still valid? Today, I'm joined by Gaines Gaming, and let's break it down. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another Rise of Kingdoms gameplay episode from your very own Shappy Gaming. Today, I am joined by the one and only Gaines Gaming. Say what's up. What's going on, Shappy Squad? This is Gaines. So, Gaines, today I am in need of your help. Rise of Kingdoms has changed quite a bit over the last few months, and we've seen all sorts of new commanders come into the game and really shake everything up. Um, the conventional wisdom used to be that when you start Rise of Kingdoms, you pick a unit type, and then you just kind of work on it, right? You you pick your Sun Tzu and your Bjorn, or you pick your... Uh, Herman and your Emotep, and you just kind of run with it. But is that really the case anymore? I, I'm hoping we can answer the question of, is troop specialization dead? Uh, what's your first thoughts? Yeah, I mean, personally, I I went definitely more into infantry when I first started playing the game. Um, you know, I actually first started out watching Chiss School when I first started playing, and he was really advocating for troop special specialization because that's really what everyone was advocating for. And so that's what I started with was with infantry. I didn't really use cavalry. I didn't really use archers. And so when gear first came out in the game, I was like, oh, this is easy. I just have a ton of infantry gear I can make. And then I was just running out of resources so quickly because I had, was only using basically food and wood. <laughs> and so I was running out of resources. I was like, I can't fight like this anymore. And then I realized that troop specialization, even though it like it sounds really good, it I just don't think it's the best way to run your account at this point in time. So early game though, right? We all watched the Chiskel video. I I decided to be Cavs. You decided to be infantry. Do you think early game troop specialization is still the move, or should people be diversifying earlier? I honestly think people should diversify earlier. However, I, I mean, I have made guides about like preseason conquest commanders, and I think infantry definitely runs the world preseason conquest, um, and then kind of pays for it when they get to season of conquest because you know infantry has always been kind of on the back burner for Lilith, um, right up until you know Sargon and Tariq uh, came out uh, with the like new rally meta. But for the open field, I feel like um, infantry in the early game is definitely a lot better. However, once you get to Season of Conquest, I think archers and cavs kind of have like the swing vote. They kind of take you over. Um, I think cavalry right now in Rise of Kingdoms is by far the best open field unit in the late game and Season of Conquest. However, I do think that troop spe specialization outside of KVK 2, 3, and, and 1 included, um, I just don't think it's as good as it used to be. Yeah. So... The way the game was originally kind of built, though, it really tailors you to troop specialization. You've got uh, that the game mode that shall not be named, Champions of Olympia, which caters almost entirely to troop specialization. And then you've got your civs, which again, aside from really like France, they really try and push you in, into kind of a, a one troop game mode. So what's your opinion on that? Yeah, I mean, that's definitely true that, um, you know, uh, they definitely encourage it through events like that and through civilizations as well. Um, however, I mean, like I said, I've been in, in the infantry main my entire time playing the game, and I've been in Germany since day one. <laughs> and um, <laughs> that's really for the troop training speed and AP recovery, you know, because I was free to play for basically my entire time playing. And so getting the AP recovery was huge. Getting the extra troop training speed is also huge. Even though I really didn't use art, uh, you didn't really use cavalry, and you know you lose a special unit. Um, but I mean, if you really want to go all in on like two or three marches and just run one troop type, I mean, obviously running one troop special specialization is going to be the best way to do it. Um, but I think at this point, with the way equipment works and with the new formation system, I just don't think it's as good of a way to kind of run your account once you get past um, like preseason to conquest. So you mentioned, you know, early game, it makes sense to go infantry if you're free to play. As we start thinking about, okay, you know, if you are going to specialize in a troop type, which troop type do you think makes the most sense to specialize in, especially given the current meta commanders? 
I definitely think cavalry. I think Cavs have the the best composition of commanders in the game. Um, and you definitely find yourself lucky because you are a Cav main. Um, but I definitely think that Cavs are, like I said, I think they run the world in the season of conquest. Um, because uh, I mean, the one, the, the two commanders I would say that infantry has that um, that kind of give them a run for their money is Guan and Scipio. Um, I mean, Scipio I think is probably at least top two in the game, um, perhaps behind either Nevsky or or Joan. But you know, cavalry they have some of the best commanders in the game um, that are both useful for rallying for for open field um, city rallies. I mean, it just the the possibilities are endless with cavalry, and so I think. Right now, if you were to specialize, I would definitely go for Cavs. So let's say we have a bunch of viewers, which hopefully we do, who are already specialized. Because um, we, we all followed that original advice. We said, I'm going Cav main. I'm going Archer main. I'm going Infantry main. Do you think they should break that to try and chase some of these meta commanders? I mean, I honestly do because I mean, th I think the best thing I ever did for my account was breaking my specialization, because like I said, like when I was trying to get um like the different equipment for all my infantry, I ended up with one really good set of infantry gear, one so-so set of infantry gear, and the one abysmal set of infantry gear, and I was <laughs> trying to field with those three marches, and then I was like, well, now I've used up like my top three infantry pairs or commanders. And then had to use so-so pairings because I ran out of commanders essentially. And obviously, as they input new commanders into the game, this is going to change. But I mean, right now, I think you really have like your big three commanders. You have Scipio Prime, you have Nevsky, and you have Boudica Prime. And I think those are the three commanders that you should center your open field fighting around because those are the three meta commanders in Rise of Kingdoms. And it just so works out that it's one infantry, one cavalry, and one archer. And so I think that the, those three commanders are the top three priority that people should have in Rise of Kingdoms at this point. So I guess the question to flip it on its head is, is there any advantage to troop specialization at this point? I mean, I think the, the biggest advantage is going to be uh, from, I mean, the civilization, obviously, if you are like an infantry player and you're running like Vikings or um, your calves and you're running Germany, I think you do reap a lot of benefits. I mean, we've seen testing. I believe Wick had some testing on troop specialization um, on like the the different troop benefits you get from that special unit. Um, and it was pretty substantial the amount of difference that you made um, using like the the specified troop. like if you're using the tectonic Knights with Germany um, and you're using calves in the open field, I mean, it makes a difference. But I mean, I just don't think um, it's the best way to do it at this point. However, I do think that there are some benefits that you get from it. However, I don't think, like I said, it's the best way to go about it. So in game modes like Champions of Olympia, which do really encourage um, <laughs> you specializing in a particular troop type, do you think they should change it and, and make that mixed blessing something that's a little bit more practical? Yeah, I mean, I I use two infantry and one cavalry march in Champions of Olympia, and I do fairly well. Um, even though I do, I don't run the mixed troop. I use the infantry troop type, um, and then I use like two tankier commanders um, as one of my infantry choices, so I can do the taunting. Um, but I do think that if they made the mixed ability a lot better, it would kind of make people want to use like one infantry, one cavalry, one archer, which is what I would do if it was better. Um, but like I said, like that that mixed um, troop ability is just not very strong relative to any of the other ones. And so that's why I use the infantry, even though I'm using one cavalry. So that one march is really reaping no benefit of the ability that I'm using, but it's still netting a much more positive effect than if I were to use the mixed. And so I do agree that like Champions of Olympia does incentivize like using one unit. Um, however, I don't think that it's the, the best way to do it unless you're using all cavalry, because then it really incentivizes you to use all cavs. <laughs> but for, like for me, I don't really have that many cavalry commanders. I really only have Nevsky. Right. Um, and so for me, it's not really worth it to, to run infantry because I don't have enough infantry commanders to run three pairs of all infantry commanders right now. Right. So a couple other questions then. I think... What's interesting about equipment is the way that you can crit things with equipment. Uh, you may remember there's there's the ability to refine, but then you also have the ability to just forge the stuff. And if you forge it, I'm, I'm trying to pull up the, uh, the percentage here. You might remember it off the top of your head. 
if you forge 11%. it, it well, it's eleven percent at first. But if you forge it, is it four times or five times? I think you get a guaranteed crit, don't you? Yeah, it's five times. So for those people that were specialized, you know, that used to be the way to go. But now, do you think you're better off refining your equipment? I think that ever since they introduced the refining equipment system, this might be a little controversial to what you th- or you're bringing up. But I think ever since they brought the refining system into Rise of Kingdoms, it actually de-incentivized you to specialize in one unit. And the reason why is because before, when you crafted like one item, like if you crafted like the Eternal Knight, for example, that's what I pulled up. If you craft the Eternal Knight once, it's 11%. Crafted a second time, it's 22%. Crafted a third time, it's 33%, then 44%, and then 100%. And that was before the refine system uh, existed. And now what you have is you have to refine it. And so obviously it is cheaper, but it, you have a much lower percentage of actually getting the refine. And then you still don't get that second piece. Right. And so I think beforehand, before the refine system, it really encouraged you to specialize. And that was really why everyone was doing it is because once you crafted it once, when you crafted it a second time, your chance of critting it increased. Yeah. Whereas now you, you crafted a second time, your chance is still 11% and you have to refine it. And so it's actually like twice as expensive to craft and refine as it was to continue to craft and get that crit beforehand. So in your opinion, uh, equipment is not really an incentive to specialize anymore. I don't think so anymore, ever since the refine system came into the game. So the conventional wisdom when you're in battle would be, you know, if you had all infantry types, you'd go for calves. If you had all archers, you'd go for infantry. At least that's... That's the conventional wisdom, because in theory, we're supposed to have a rock, paper, scissors in Rise of Kingdoms. No, I mm-hmm. said in theory. Um, if you are mixed, right? I know you are. You've got all the meta commanders maxed. Who do you attack in the field? I attack the other meta commanders, I'll be honest. <laughs> um, so like, I go for commanders like Boudicca. I go for Nevsky. I go for Guan. Um, if I see like a Trajan, I swarm that thing down as fast as possible. Um, you know, I, I really go for like the, the top tier commanders in the game. If I see like a commander, like, you know, like Chandra, I mean, like, yes, it can be good, but it's not as much of a threat as seeing like a YSG or seeing a Boudicca on the field. Um, cause it's not doing as much damage, it's not doing like AOE. And so it's like, you want to like, what I do, what I prioritize is I take out the top priority marches first. And so it's ironic that I'm actually using the commanders that are top priority marches, but I basically attack anything that looks like my marches, if that makes sense. Well, that's funny, though, because we're, we're saying, you know, troop specialization, there's no advantage to that. But ironically, if there's only really one meta pair per unit type, are you kind of making it so you get targeted less if you do specialize? Potentially, yes. But at the same time, you might also be reducing your effectiveness on the field. And so, I mean, if like, like, for example, if you have 50 people on the field um, and all 50 of them are using Boudicca, it makes a huge difference if like, like um, if 40 of them weren't using Boudicca or like if 40 of them weren't using YSG as a secondary um, and not using like that meta pairing, if they were all like specialized in infantry and none of them were using like that, that archer, um, it just wouldn't be as much as much effectiveness on the field if they were using like Pakal Herald, for example, if they were infantry main and specialize in infantry and they just didn't have anything else to put out, so they use Pakal Herald, they're not really giving a whole lot of value to their teammates on the field. Makes sense to me. I also think, and this just dawned on me, if we're talking about rally metas and garrison metas, you're going to be using a bunch of different unit types. And so if you are specialized in something like infantry, for example, you know, you're garrisoning a Zeno, you're rallying with a Tariq. You did, that's a lot of troops to try and keep for a five march specialization, you know, tactic. Precisely. And that's that's actually one reason why I stopped uh, specializing is because, you know, infantry was really used as like the only garrison like for a long time um, and still is the primary garrison role right now is is infantry. Um, and now with like a, an infantry meta in rallying now, makes it even more of an infantry meta and having infantry available. And so if you, like you said, if you're fielding like three to five marches of infantry and you're in season of conquest, 
you have to have like 2 million infantry to fight comfortably in Season of Conquest with 5 marches, or 6 marches, or 7 marches, whatever you're fielding. And um, at the same time, I mean, a counter to that is if you guys are rallying um, archers or cavalry, then, oh, you can send all your cavs to die every single KVK and you don't care. But at the same time, then you can't garrison anything with infantry because you right. have to save all your infantry. So I think, I think that's another, another feather in the cap of, of non-specialization. So, Gaines, in, in your expert opinion, do you think specialization is dead in Rise of Kingdoms? I don't know if I would say dead. I would say it's not optimal is how I would describe it. I mean, you can still be very, very good and trade very well and like have a really good murder ball fight if you are specializing. And like I said, I think if you're going to, if you're going to choose any troop type, go for calves, 100%. Don't go for infantry. Don't go for archers. Go for calves. You're the best options there. But I do think that you're going to have a better experience both for you and for your allies if you do break out into both um, the other troop types. So if you use archers, cavalry, and infantry all at the same time, I think you're, you and your allies are going to have a better experience fighting and do better in the field than if you have all cavalry, all archers, or all infantry. I agree with you. Well, I think we're going to call the episode there. Hopefully we've answered the question for everyone who's watching the video. For some of you, this is great news. For some of you, this is... Not so great news, but uh, let us know your thoughts in the comment section. And if you guys haven't already, do be sure to hit that subscribe button for me on the bottom right hand corner. And for gains, be sure to check out his channel. I'm going to link it on the top right side of your screen now. So be sure to go check him out. Give him a subscribe. And uh, thank you so much, Gaines, for coming out on the channel today. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you all. Shappy out.